people's definitions of success is different, but um, I think that people get success confused with goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or achievement. Or achievement, yeah. yeah. So when you mentioned the, when I make a million dollars, I'm successful. Well, that's to me is a goal or an achievement. And success is, did I live by the 10 rules along the way? Did I get knocked down and never stay down? Did I get back up and keep moving forward? Did I, did I learn something? Did I teach something? Was I, was I a human kind, nice person to everybody, you know, along the way? Or did I have to step on somebody to get to the achievement? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am one of your hosts, Joseph Caldwell. This is Tyler Harris, the other host, and we have Aaron Schmaus with us today, and we are your Sales Wolves. Uh, Aaron, I didn't catch a how hardly at all. Oh, I did. It was it's just bad ear. It was. It's, it yeah. is my bad ear. <laughs> Wait, I thought they were both bad because <laughs> didn't wasn't there a, a shot that rang oh, yeah. out? And... No, it it. Did what's the thing where you get uh, dazed and confused from loud, noi- loud noises? That oh, happened. Oh yeah. To me. Oh yeah. Well, anyway, all right. <laughs> We've got a very interesting podcast for you today. I'm excited about it. Aaron Schmaus from Archery Outdoorsman and my hunting buddy we have on here, and um, we are going to discuss the. Tell us what we're going to discuss, man. What I'm excited about, and there's a book forthcoming shortly yeah. with this. Yeah. Oh, well, it still got to get in the editing phase and all that kind of stuff, but it's about about done. Um, so should I go into how it came about? Yeah, or? yeah absolutely. Okay. So we, uh, when we were on our archery elk hunt in Montana, we, Dave and I had kind of told Joseph really what makes a good hunting partner and uh, what, to, what to watch out for um, because and, they were terrified that I wasn't one. <laughs> yeah. Well, not really that, but we wanted to make sure that we taught you everything that that we possibly could. Obviously, you know, you're not going to teach everything in just a couple weeks, but we wanted to teach you all the pitfalls that took us years to uh, to avoid, and so we came up with these rules for finding a good hunting partner and it, they and Tyler, you're gonna really, like, have you read them yet no uh, uh, this is this is fresh. good because tyler has not heard these rules for for, for finding a good hunting buddy or a, or a partner and tyler you're gonna laugh when you read them because they they are um they stand true across the board, no matter what type of yeah. partner you're looking for, and it's really fascinating. Maybe a That's sales hunting buddy, a sales hunting buddy, oh, yeah, or a or a or a partner in marriage, or a partner yeah. in business, or like there's a lot of different correlations here. But isn't that funny? Whenever you find a truth, it's true mm-hmm. all the time. Right. So anyway, it's fascinating. So so basically, rule number one for me is, and Joseph can tell you. When I hunt, I hunt hard, and uh, I, I try and work hard. So rule number one for me was works with the same amount of suck that you're willing to stand. Mm. So you've got to work as hard as I do, or harder. Uh, number two let's was- go, let's, let's pause on each one and talk about it. So yeah. you got to find somebody that's willing to endure the same amount of suck. Mm. When he told me that, I was like, Oh gosh, I wonder how much suck they can endure, like <laughs> like for real. Yeah, yeah. And um, from Aaron, w- he likes to do like if it's hard, mm-hmm. he he likes to do the hard things. Yeah. And isn't that funny that if you find a winner in any area, that's how they are. Mm-hmm. Like think about it, in a marriage, you want somebody that's willing to go through what hard times. I mean, it's easy during the good times. Oh, yeah. Like, the good times are easy. It gets boring. It gets boring. <laughs> it's boring. Yeah, true. And human nature, we try to make things harder, mm-hmm. you know, even in the good times. Th- I, I can remember having 
one of a million business ideas. Uh, and when I told you about it, you're like, first question, is it going to be very difficult? And I was like, yeah, I think so. He's like, okay, I'm interested in learning more. <laughs> it's like, if it wasn't going to be extremely difficult, it's like, well, it's probably not something worth doing. Well, right, and other people will do it. Yeah, right, exactly, and that's that's another reason I like to hunt hard, and you know, one of my rules is I want to get at least a couple miles away from any road or trail, because people are freaking lazy. <laughs> they they don't want to do the hard stuff. They they want it to come easy. They, and this isn't a millennial joke because I I think I'm like right there on the cusp. I think you are one. I hate There's it. no doubt I you're not on the that, cusp. But old? Uh, 33. Then he's, oh, yeah, he's damn dead in the middle yeah, of one. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so is Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm an old soul. Thing. He's like, I think I'm on the cusp. <laughs> <laughs> like, on the cusp, I mean in the middle. <laughs> I'm but, the outer edge. I mean, people, you know, it seems like, I guess... In, in my genre or my, my generation. 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 Yeah, not genre. <laughs> anyway, my generation, they they want things handed to them. They want it to yeah. be easy. And you're not going to get that if you go on a hunting trip with me. It is not easy. So that was why I came up with rule number one. I don't want to be dragging your ass up the hill. Mm-hmm. Yep. Are there, I bet if you looked at it, seems like if you did a report on the number of millennials that hunt, it's drastically lower than the generation prior. Oh, it's huge. Like, I don't know a lot of people that hunt, period. Yeah. Especially in my generation, in our generation, like, at all. Right. Um, I, wonder how, I wonder how significant, though, the difference is. It's probably I bet it's, I bet it's, <clears throat> I bet, I bet geograph- it's 80%. Geographic, obviously. I mean, if, oh, you yeah, live in, if you live in Montana, you're probably more apt to go outside and Right. But even some of the one, people that we Versus, met out there, they don't hunt. Yeah, that's yeah. Like it was, it was fascinating. The younger ones didn't. It just wasn't a, wasn't a thing because people do. I mean, it's human nature to avoid, take the path that's easy, mm-hmm. and and hunting out there, I've. It's not like sitting in a tree stand. Which sitting in a tree stand and waiting for something to come along takes patience. Yes, it's hard. Is it cold sometimes? Yes, you have to endure things sure. in any type of hunt. Everything has a different type of hardness to it. But like he's talking about, going a couple miles in the back country of Montana or the however many we average today, eight to ten miles a day or whatever it was, and yeah, it was you know, like, 120 stories to, a day. Yeah, I think we did um, almost 140 miles in yeah. the ten days that we were there. Yep. And uh, uh, we climbed, I want to say it was almost 1,100 stories. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of up and down and a lot of, a lot of pain in between the, hopefully you get a mm-hmm. shot and you're able to harvest yeah. something. So, but you think about it in business, man, um, like your business partners and who you choose, like, wouldn't you want to know that that mm-hmm. person is willing to work as hard as you? And when the going gets tough, they don't throw in the towel mm-hmm. or at least you don't quit on the same day. Yeah. We were talking about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. There was times in the hunt where, you know, I missed my second shot. I missed my second shot that was, it was perfect and I blew it. And literally, when we were standing there, I couldn't hardly really say anything. He's like, man, you all right? And I was, and I just looked at him, I was like, I quit. I quit, mm-hmm. let's go back. And he was like, this way. And I was like, no, truck's that way. <laughs> like, I'm not real good at navigation, but I know I'll walk this path from that way, and I can walk that path and get back to the truck somewhere or back to the campsite. And he was like, nope, we keep going. So this is when that's part of hunting. He's like, that's why it's called hunting and not killing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so, and we did that for each other several times. And you got to have somebody that's willing to do that, willing to go, nope, you can't quit now. Yeah. You're not quitting. Won't let you. I've had several business partners in, uh, you know, different companies that I've started and all that kind of stuff and the number one reason I think that I've had failed partnerships and almost every single one of them have failed um, was because they didn't want to work as hard as I did. Mm -hmm. Um, You know they just you know they'd lay down or they'd be like well you know I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna have a Friday night and yeah. And there I am sitting at the office or pounding nails or doing whatever. Yep. Mm-hmm. And 
it, it wears on you if you've got a partner that's not working and all you see is you know your sweat getting poured into it and yeah. and theirs isn't true 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 what's the second so, what's the number, number what's the number two rule all right are these so, in order of, of uh importance of like importance no. or order of like <laughs> significance okay i think order of importance is going to be Person. personally dependent yeah you know so um for me I, I don't know if this is actually my number two, but um, basically doesn't steal your spot um, and doesn't go to your spot without talking to you or without your permission. Um, I hunt almost exclusively on public land. So technically the land is everybody's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can go there and she can go there, he can go there, whoever. It's everybody's land, but you work your ass off finding those places. Hmm. Um, so to bring somebody in to those places, when you finally find a good spot, it's like gold. Hmm. You know, um, it's, I guess it would be the same thing in business. If, if you finally find a good niche um, that is good for making money, you don't want somebody that's gonna sell your, your secrets. Mm -hmm. Or, or steal your, your right. trade secrets and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so that's that's what I have for number two. And that's two. based off of, uh, you know, like we were talking, it's based off communication. Mm -hmm. like yeah. You communicate effectively about this is what it is and you don't have anybody encroach upon on what you've poured yourself into. Right. It's number three. Right. Um, number three is I think you have to have fairly aligned morals. Mm. Um, I think everybody's got to be on the same page with their moral compass. Yeah. Mission, vision, values. That's what we, we equate it to in business. Mm -hmm. We have the same ethics. And it's funny, we talk about loyalty. Um, and we see loyalty very different, and it falls in line with, with exactly what you're saying. Because we don't require people that... Uh, work for the company or or that come on board with us and, and sell with us. We don't require them to be loyal to us That's the thing that most companies will do they require them to be loyal to them and we don't require that especially in the beginning because They don't know you like Tyler when you got started. I didn't know you I wasn't loyal to you But we've walked the same path for how many years now Four. four years We've walked the path together going the same road and we were loyal to the same mission, the same vision, the same values. We had the same compass taking us the same direction. And along that way, you learn to trust and loyalty is built off of long-term trust. Yeah. Like there's Absolutely. just no way about it. You can't develop it overnight. It is, it is you walk this path together and it's developed. And so that's, that's, when, that's when you wake up one day and you go, I'm loyal to Tyler. Mm -hmm. Tyler's loyal to me. I'm loyal to Aaron. Aaron's loyal to me. Right. That's how that's how that happens. So it is is walking that same path and and that loyalty's built that off of off of being guided by that same compass. Right. So. But your your loyal your loyalty's got to go both ways too. Um, so you know employee employer relationship. Um, you know, you've got to be loyal to your employees and your employees have to be loyal to you at some point. Yep. Um, but that's not going to happen if you don't have a similar moral compass. Yep. So. And I would think too, right, especially when in, in, the, in reference to number one, when you do get in a situation where things are extremely difficult and it's extremely tough and it's easy for one party to quit that you kind of fall back to those morals as far as what right. kind of keeps pushing you forward or what kind of keeps you engaged or what keeps you um, in it. Um, you kind of fall back to those things that you're basically built on um, to, to get you through it. And if, and if your morals are completely different than yours, then that's probably going to be a very difficult situation. And we fall back on two different compasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going yeah. different directions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. isn't, that, isn't that crazy how they all tie together? Mm -hmm. What's the fourth one? Uh, Willing to teach. Um, I've had, I've, I've hunted with a bunch of people and I've actually 
done this with business as well. People who are just plays everything close to the vest, don't want to teach you um, really anything um, because they're afraid that you might be better than them or whatever. But the truth is, no matter how good or bad anybody is at anything, you can still learn mm -hmm. from them. Um, I learned a bunch, and and I talk about this in in the book that I'm writing, um, from from you, and even from a hunting aspect. Um, I've never actually brought a new person into hunting like oh, that. Oh, brand, brand new, going mm -hmm. into like one of the hardest hunts with yeah. a bow yeah. ever. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and so you learn teaching. Well, yeah, you, and, and you learn so much by teaching. Um, you know, and I go into it more in depth in, in my book, but it's, it's, it's amazing how much um, you learn. You know what's funny is is a couple things. Your willingness to teach someone else, not only will that that creates an avalanche of learning on your side. You really learn through teaching. Like it, it, it enhances everything you do. But your willingness to do it is a is a world viewpoint that that I wanted to touch on. So I wanted to teach Tyler everything I knew about selling insurance and, and running this business and everything else because I don't see the world as, um, as limited resources. I don't see that. Uh, I had a mentor that poured into me and I used to wonder, <laughs> I used to wonder, man, why would he teach me everything he knows? Because isn't he just creating a competitor down the road at some point? And then, and I asked him one time, I was like, what? What, uh, why do you do that? Why will you, he'll actually have a competitor call him and he'll teach them everything he knows. He was like, if you wanna open up across the street from me, I'll help you do it. And, and I thought, why is he willing to do that? So I asked him one time and he said, it's all in how you see the world. He goes, there's enough money out there for everybody. And an entrepreneur does not see it as a pie and I've gotta get my slice of the pie because there's only so much pie. An entrepreneur sees it and goes, let's just make another pie. Mm -hmm. There's unlimited resources. Make yeah. more pies. It's not just one pie that we all pull from. And when that's over, oh, Aaron doesn't get to eat pie. Yeah. No, we just shove another one in the oven, man, <laughs> and and yeah. keep going. And so, and so that's really why we do this podcast, mm -hmm. right? Um, there may be insurance people out there that have listened to this podcast forever, and now they're crushing insurance and selling a bunch of life insurance. Yeah. Have we missed a meal because of that? <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. And and so. You know, teaching someone else how to hunt and passing it on, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So, well, it, it makes you question your own methods too. Mm -hmm. So, True. you can, you can um, enhance your own methods. There were tons of questions that, that you asked, and I was like, oh, I don't know why I do that really. And then, you know, <laughs> it, it took deeper thought for yeah. me to actually teach sure. you why I did it. So, yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, which goes along with number five is willing to learn. Yeah, that's... Um, if you're not willing to learn in any industry, in any... I mean, if you're married, if you got a business partner, if you're in a business by yourself, I don't care what you do in life. I don't care if you're a doctor and you're at the top of your game. I don't care if you're a basketball player and you're at the top of your game, football player at the top of your game. If you're not willing to learn and know that there's a, there's a step beyond you already and you're not willing to touch on that, and keep pushing, then, then you're already going backward while you think you're while you think you're level. You're already moving backward. What do you think, Tyler? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's all we look for are people that are coachable and teachable. Yep. Um, I'd f I'd far rather have someone that's coachable over someone that has just raw talent any day. Yeah, um, absolutely. And the graveyard's just, full of wasted talent. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different posture, right? It's just a different posture that I think um, puts someone in, in a place uh, to ultimately succeed. But, I mean, if you look at relationships, if you look at partnerships, if you look at anything, um, to me there's just a... Um, the idea that someone is not willing to learn is the idea that they've got it all figured out, which is ego. Mm -hmm. and it's a definition of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and, that's, and that's certainly the... Uh, 
<laughs> not the answer. Yeah. yeah. Can't feed your family and your ego at the same time. Love that quote. Mm-hmm. Some general. Uh, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Some general said that. Some general said that. <laughs> so number six, I have um, the willing to compromise. Ooh. Um, and I have a maybe little bit different view on compromising. Um, I've read a lot of self-help books and stuff like that, and they say you got to compromise. And um, and the thought has been, you know, I brought it up a few times. If you're compromising, you're losing. Somebody is losing something, but that's that's not really the case. If you, and it, it ties in later on with, you know, some of these other, um, some of these other rules, but if if you're compromising, you're doing what's best for the team. Now, I'm not going to step on Tyler, uh, you know, in order to get my way, you know, and I wouldn't expect him to do that for me right. or to me, you know, it, it's gotta be mutually beneficial and you've all gotta be looking at the end game and the, the true meaning of what your success is. Yep, true. What do you think about compromise, Tyler? Um, Won't stay <clears throat> married without it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like, was like some movie where he's like, we compromised and we did what she wanted. Um, we compromise. <laughs> <laughs> compromise means saying yes. It seems like so. uh, it seems like, as you mentioned, compromise that it's not all. It's not always compromising in a. This person wants this. This person wants that, and so they meet somewhere in the middle. To me, compromise also can be this person wants that. This person wants this, but this person's willing to go with that. In order to like further the mission, further the mission, and then maybe there be a circumstance down the road where they can have what they want, um, as long as it's you know, as long as it doesn't go against this person's morals and ethics. And yeah, we're not it, talking about compromising your your morals, ethics, yeah, and all right, that stuff. Absolutely, yeah. mm-hmm. but a compromise doesn't always mean meeting in the middle. No, it doesn't. Sometimes a compromise is one person just says, "Okay, okay. we can do it your way this time." Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's important because a lot of times it's only viewed as like some some negotiation where it's one ten okay how about five great right <laughs> yeah. it's not it's not always the case um, which you're yeah. well acquainted with <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that <laughs> but that's but a lot of times that's going to be in like I mean, a, in, a, in a marriage or but in a marriage in a relationship it's not always you're coming to like. You know, this person wants this, this person wants that. Let's meet somewhere in the middle. Um, but I think also the the other side of that is that it's not all. It's not a game of like um, uh, keeping score. No. Of right. like, well, I've had three this week, so this one, regardless of how you feel about it, this one's mine. You right. Know? Like, mm-hmm. It's just about. <laughs> I think a lot of it comes down to the things we've already discussed, and and about being in the same place morally and, and about uh, being loyal to one another and having that trust built that you're able to compromise yep. uh, and not have that kind of point system going back and forth because that's not really anything built out of trust. It's just built out of um, you know one person wanting to think that things are fair. Right. right? Things are never going to be truly Nothing's 100% fair. fair. Right. It's just about what can we do right now? What's the best case scenario right now to move forward? You know what I asked too? I asked that. I asked my mentor that about fair in a business. I, was, I said, "Man, if, how did you work out stuff on the front end so that you had the right portion of the business and they had this?" And he was like, "And I said, so it was fair." And he goes, "Fair." <laughs> he goes, "I've never been in a business situation I thought was fair. Never." He goes, "I always knew I was going to bring more work and more effort and do more than anybody else there." <laughs> And, and he said, if you want the fair, son, it comes to Spartanburg once a year. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and so it was, it was funny. It, it made yeah. me go, huh, okay. And that ties right into compromise. You, you, you're willing to go, you're willing to allow your ego to die and not get credit for things and go, okay, this pushes everything forward. That's also a compromise. You compromise with yourself yeah. and going, hey, you don't need all the credit. You don't need even any of the credit. Just keep mm-hmm. 
keep moving the mission forward. Right. Sure. Right. So, Absolutely. What are we at? Number seven? Uh, yeah. Number seven uh, is willing to take one for the team. Oh, that's... So... Uh, <laughs> what are you looking at me for? <laughs> Actually, it's your turn. Joe, <laughs> who, uh, the last trip to Montana, I would say Joe definitely took one for the team. Um, we uh, we had heard about a, a herd of elk, that uh, large herd of elk. Um, How many is a large herd of elk? Well, this one was probably what four hundred head. Good. Gracious. Now That's they, a lot. Yeah, I was thinking twenty. Now so you would think. Ass. No, we crept up. We crept up on seventeen. And and four hundred. We finally. When I say we crept up on them, man, they were bedded down, and we oh, we worked so hard to get up. It was snowing, it was freezing. I was freezing. I had the wrong equipment, like I was in the <laughs> wrong shoes. Everything else was right. And by the time we got up there, half my foot I couldn't feel it, and the other half was on fire. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was getting frostbite. And 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 before we we've got these elk, they're twenty yards away. Oh yeah, at the most. Yeah, and we are literally arguing, trying to get our phones to work to look up where my cow elk tags were because I had two oh, two yeah. tags, and we found out that this place that we went to, I couldn't shoot one of those cow elk because it was it was a different region, mm-hmm. and you know you pull one out of there and you go to jail and they yeah. take all your yeah. stuff. So, so we were like, oh my gosh, and uh, and so it was um, it was uh, a little painful. To yeah. figure that out, but his bull tag was still good, mm-hmm. and we're scanning this hill where all these elk are are bedded down, and didn't see a bull until I mean there was one way way up. We finally saw him. Uh, I don't remember if you were still with me when uh, when I first saw the bull, um, but yeah, it, it was I don't know, a mile and a half away as the crow flies, yeah. and. <laughs> I mean, it, I had to climb almost a cliff to get there. In the and, snow. Yeah, in, Jeez. I don't know, maybe 10 inches of snow. Wow. Um, so at that point, I told him, I was like, there's no way I can stay out here for two or three more hours. Like, mm-hmm. there's no way I'll have frostbite. Yeah. I've got to move and get my feet warm. And, and I knew that what he was going to be doing was creeping mm-hmm. and laying in the snow. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's not going to do anything for me. So I was like, I'll never be unprepared shoe-wise again, I promise that. <laughs> so it was probably what, how, probably a mile and a half down to the car, you think, or maybe you two? Uh, I think when I when I took a GPS line distance, it was like 2.17, I think. Okay, so I, I went down this thing, fell about 400 times, got back to the <laughs> car, and uh, and warmed my feet up, because I knew, I was like, dude, if if anyone can get close enough to take a shot, it's him. Mm-hmm. And he's going to call me, and then I'm going to have to hike right back up there to haul it back down. <laughs> it was not, I know it was not an easy hike down. Uh, I think it was, like, it, it well, I went over, what was it, 180 stories, I think, yeah. was what I had done. And where Joseph was, I think I had looked at it, and it was at, right at about 100 stories. So... Yeah, and we did that by 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it, it was rough. But where Joseph definitely took one for the team was... Makes him laugh. You know, Makes this shit's funny. <laughs> well, and, and actually, I, I felt really, really bad. And I'll explain I that don't. here in a minute. <laughs> but, you know, we, we finally got all those elk. We had worked our butts off before that the the days before that and um we finally got to all those elk and then joe's tag wasn't any good (laughs) and my tag was the only one that that was any good and i was like man that that sucks you know i just knew i was like gotta get my feet warm and then i'll stick them back in these cold boots and climb a couple miles straight (laughs) up to go help him haul this thing out if he gets it yeah well i mean just like you know when you saw that bear i yeah. I I could have shot that bear, but that was fine. Said, "Hey, here you go. Mm. You know, get see if you could take a shot. You know, but he he took one for the team because man, that is such a bitch of a hunt, mm. and uh, to go all that way, invest all that time, all that money, all that just everything in." Um, 
to have somebody else notch the tag and and actually pull the trigger that that's taking one for the team i mean that's and it comes down to the success of the team so he said to me later on he said we killed a bull you just pulled the trigger mm -hmm. and yeah. and that's what it is we both worked for it so it was fun yeah was a lot of fun then then when i got his video thing talking about how he shot it <laughs> so it was like 350 yard shot yeah wow. and hit it right in the heart clean shot perfect which is the only shot you should take and uh and dropped him right there finally got to him and and so i'm making my way back up the mountain just not happy <laughs> and, and i'm going straight up this thing and then all of a sudden i guess other hunters had heard about this herd and man bullets start flying and i hit the yeah. deck dude <laughs> i was like oh my gosh yeah right so, after i shot him yeah. uh the like these these guys come riding by on on horses and th i had elk like why around me running and, around yeah them. Wow. and i'm i'm hearing bow 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 and i'm you know there's a knoll in front of me that i you know i couldn't see anybody down there but there's bullets coming from that direction <laughs> and i'm like oh crap you know <laughs> what I didn't even know there were people there, you know, yeah. but. Same, but I get about three quarters of the way back up and, and it was the greatest. Here's the thing, man. We knew that we we're gonna have to make another two trips probably because 600 pounds, you, you're carrying it out on your back. We were gonna pack it out. And uh, he likes doing things really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And so it's probably gonna take I did us. it very easy. Take, it's probably gonna take us till midnight, but a guy on a horse came along that had not gotten anything and asked him if he could haul it down. I was about three quarters of the way there. And when he called, when I got the message on my phone, which how your phones work out there, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It usually don't work, but <laughs> he was like, you can turn around. This guy's dragging it down the mountain for us. And I was like, thank you, <laughs> so good. So I turned around and, but, uh, but it ended up being successful. And, uh, and it was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and but. we just we we use every single piece of that elk too. Like it's not, and funny people people think hunting is awful, but they'll stop and get a burger today, and they give no thought to the cow that died to give them that burger, mm -hmm. um, or even uh, the vegetarians of the world who give no thought to the thousands of animals that die when when harvesting all of the. The, the crops and everything to feed them. Like they just don't, yeah. or when they, they don't they feed think. their cat. <laughs> right, right, or yeah. when they feed their cat or when they feed their dog or everything whatever. It's a slaughterhouse. It's, uh, it's a, um, but when you're that close to the food, now this is off topic, but when you're that close to the food, it's almost a spiritual thing. You're super grateful mm -hmm. and you honor that animal for the sacrifice that it made to feed your family. And, and so it's a, it's, a different, it's a different way to look at it. Not a lot of people get it, but that's okay. What's our next yeah. rule? So, knows how to be part of a team. Um, Man, Tyler could talk on that for years, yeah. actually. <laughs> you could. Yeah. Um, I've never seen another person be more part of the team and require less for themselves than you. I hmm. really haven't. I haven't seen it. Um, but uh, it's... it's uh, when you have the team goal in mind mm -hmm. and you're willing to sacrifice personally for the team goal, it's a whole nother ball game. Oh yeah. It's a whole nother ball game. Yeah. I think a lot of that stems <clears throat> for most people from growing up like in sports and yeah. <clears throat> things like that are so important. Um, and I think, you know, tying this all back to, to business and the other areas of your life, um, finding someone that does know how to be part of a team, it's looking into their past and seeing, well, when else have they been a part of a team? Right. Um, because if you find someone that comes from a background of sports, a background um, in, in other areas where they've had to um, you know, accomplish a goal with a group of people, then that would probably be a good indicator of this person has at least a probability of, yep. of understanding um, that. But, <clears throat> but I think it's, it's all about, like you have to be selfish to be selfless, is that right? Um, but knowing that by putting yourself first um, is, is the best thing for the team. But in the, in the team scenario, being willing to put, your, put others in front of you 
And so depending on the scenario, being able to take um, whatever that goal may be that you're going after and saying, yep. you know, okay, I'm going to take one for the team, like on the last one, or, hey, let's set up a compromise to make this work best for the team. Uh, and, and not really even focusing on the individuals within it, just right. looking yep. at the team as one unit, basically, yep. um, and just whatever the goal is and whatever costs. Yeah. And keep pushing that mission forward. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yep. I like it. How, which one are we on now? Uh, number nine. Yeah, we're on number nine. Um, understands the meaning of success. And success to me is basically what you make it. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that, that say, you know, with hunting, oh, you know, I killed something, so that's my success. But to me, that's, that's not really success. Uh, to me, success is, okay, I got back safe. I learned something along the way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was able to maybe if I'm hunting with a partner or something like that, I was able to teach something. Um, you know, and if you notch your tag, that's definitely a bonus. Yep. If, if you keep doing things like that, and, and you alter your perception of success, you know, I, my idea of success is not, okay, once I make it to a million dollars, that's, that's my idea of success. Gotcha. You know, if, I know that if I'm, if I'm learning and I'm teaching um, and I'm helping, then success will come to me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll eventually notch my tag and um, be successful in the conventional sense. Mm -hmm. and, and, and people's definitions of success is different, but um, I think that people get success confused with goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or achievement. Or achievement, yeah. yeah. So when you mentioned the, when I make a million dollars, I'm successful. Well, that's to me is a goal or an achievement. And success is, did I live by the 10 rules along the way? Did I get knocked down and never stay down? Did I get back up and keep moving forward? Did I, did I learn something? Did I teach something? Was I, was I a humankind, nice person to everybody, you know, along the way? Or did I have to step on somebody to get to the achievement? You see what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. So I, I think there's lots of poor people that are um, not successful, and there's lots of rich people that are not successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think, too, there's a lot to be said for the success being the hunt. Like the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think for all of us, that no matter what level of success or no, no matter what level of achievement, hit this huge goal, great, what's next? Hit this huge goal, great, what are we gonna go after next? It's, it's more about just being in the hunt because yeah. there's not a certain level where we're gonna say, all right, let's, let's pack her up and... Well, I'm and, done. Yeah, let's, let's go all off right. and find an island and, and just relax for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Um, that it'll always be in the hunt for something, something more. And in a literal sense, I'm sure there's things that you want to hunt for, like you were just talking about, yeah. the Himalayan tar, which I didn't even know was a thing, um, that there's always going to be something else to go after. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think that, that being, in the minds, being in the mindset that just finding happiness and finding fulfillment in the actual process of the hunt makes it to where there's not so much pressure on the actual achievement aspect, um, but the reality is, whether it's sales or whether it's actually hunting, if you keep on firing a trigger, you're probably going to hit something at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was Unless you're Joseph said? and it just takes a long time. It takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> what was it Dave said on, on the hunt? It was uh, something, something to the effect that if you expect to go out and kill something, every single time, you're not gonna be hunting for very long. You won't hunt for very long. Right. And that is 100% true. Because if you think that, you're gonna go out and be successful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same thing in sales. If you think you're gonna sell it every time, it's not gonna happen, but you need to go out with the expectation that you're going to sell it every time or that you're going to be successful in the hunt every time, but it's not gonna happen. 
Right. And you need to be able to hit failure, learn from it, and keep moving forward. You got to be okay with failure. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you get real comfortable with it. Hmm. It's been my companion for not, years. Not necessarily <laughs> like it. No. But sure. You know, okay with it. Failure and I have a love hate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> What's um, the last one, man? All right. So, as far as a partner goes, I want somebody that's not going to let me quit. Um, there's times where you just get beat down and you just want to say, you just want to throw in the towel and you're like, I'm done. And um, a good partner's right there encouraging you, saying, you know what, it's all right. There's another day. There's, you know, right up over this hill or, you know, right down this draw or something like that. You know, they don't let you quit. Hmm. And and you're that support for each other. Yeah. It's that way in marriage. It's that way with a business partner. So this fits across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It fits across the board. Absolutely. <laughs> Thinking of <in> a marriage, <laughs> just that dialogue. I'm not going to let you quit. <laughs> I'm not, not going to let you quit today. <laughs> I want a divorce. I'm not going to let. I don't. You, think I refuse to let you quit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, what's funny is I, I said that to Kim. People, somebody said, uh, some, you know, whatever. How long have y'all been together? And we told them how long we've been together. And like, wow, what's the secret? And I'm like, well, you, you both just don't quit on the same day yeah because mm -hmm. there's days you want to quit I don't oh, care yeah, who you are sure. there's days you want to bow out of a marriage there's days you want to bow out of a business partnership mm -hmm. there's damn sure days I wanted to bow out of that hunt yeah. I just didn't know how to get back um, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't teach me land nav until like the eighth day <laughs> so but uh, it was but, all preordained <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that's uh, the no quitting part it's uh, and it's it's the thing. It's the thread that binds all successes. Mm -hmm. It really is. You got no quit in you. It's the thread that binds them all. Yeah. It binds all those together. Kind of reminds me back with uh, Tom Shea, and with Unbreakable, and when he starts talking, and we and we were discussing this last week um, to some extent about this idea of like you've got this goal. And it was as we were coming to this, you know, December last year, people were trying to hit their goals. And some of them are like so far off their goals that it's not possible. Like you're not going to hit your goal. But you set new goals. Like what, what can I do today? And like when in Unbreakable, Tom Shea talks about like I had to stand up. Like I just had to get it. Like I had get to, up. I had to get move. up. Like, get up. That's what he had to yeah, tell himself. Like, get up. like, and that was like the new goal. Like we had this goal of this mission, but now the goal is just to to get up. Like literally to get up. And and the next goal is to get over to the building next door where he knew some of his people were. Like, yep. and that's his sole focus, only goal. If I can just accomplish this, and to me, um, that's so huge in not quitting because quitting from what, right? Like. You know, are you quitting the 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 huge mission, the the big end goal, or are you taking that and saying, okay, well, that is no longer an option. What can I accomplish? Yep. Let's accomplish that. No, you didn't quit this. Mm -hmm. You still moved. You're still yep. doing something, and and it's almost like uh, David Goggins always talks about in that big that crazy uh, 24 hour uh, oh, yeah. run that he did. I love David. Yeah, like when when he got up. Uh, when he when he eventually collapsed and and he hadn't ran more than you know like a half marathon or a marathon he was trying to do this hundred miles in twenty four yeah. hours yeah and, it, that's a that's a pain in the ass oh yeah me. what's the uh, longest you've done a hundred and twenty six point two oh jeez I can't even fathom yeah thirty five hours mm, yeah but when he talked about like collapsing and 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 his wife told him like how much further he had to go what he had to do. And it was literally just like it, I, my first goal, I had to get up. And then mm -hmm. I just had to be able to take one step. Then I had to be able to walk. And then next thing you know, he's, you know, he's jogging. Um, crazy thing about that story, I heard that story told by someone else, uh, Jesse Eitzer. Are you familiar with him? Mm -hmm. um, Sarah Blakely's husband. Uh, she was the founder of Spanx, a billion-dollar company. And Jesse's got tons of huge, huge well, successes. I'm definitely familiar with Spanx, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm wearing some right now. <laughs> 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 but he um, he's incredibly successful himself and extremely motivating guy. But he's a crazy ultra-endurance athlete. He talked about it. He was in that race that David Goggins was in. Um, and... Uh, 
he said that like when he was there doing that race, like he had his big RV and like his nutrition coach and his training coach and his performance coach and like a chef and like all that stuff. He said literally David Goggins showed up to that race with like a pack of crackers and like two Gatorades. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was There's like, no, he had absolutely yeah. like no preparation. That's, hilarious. Right That's right the deck stacked against you. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That's, That's when you want to make it really difficult. Yeah. But it was that mental, yeah. that mental toughness that, that got him through it and he just refused to quit even though the initial goal was out of the question at that point yeah right. it just became okay what what goal can i run after now um and, and just not quit moving was it eating the elephant mm -hmm. one yeah. bite at a time yeah you know it's funny I, I was talking to my kids the other day about about tom shea and because we are such a in our world, we set goals, we go after goals, mm -hmm. right? We, we miss that, we set another goal. We hit that, we set another goal, whatever. We're always goal-oriented and, and plan and everything. And, but to really see who you are, you need not have the option of winning. Mm. You can't win. Remember him talking about that, that that's their sole purpose in Hell Week, is they yeah. take away the SEAL's ability to win period. anytime there yep. was like just this ounce like glimmer of hope that you could possibly accomplish they, the goal. they would they take it. your mask off or they yep. would unplug your oxygen or they would yeah it's crazy and 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 it's who are you then mm -hmm. do you wilt or do you go for because he said he said he never went on a mission where he didn't run out of food water and ammunition mm -hmm. And so when you're when when the mission's this, like you were saying, and you're pinned down by enemy fire, and you have no food, no water, and no ammunition, who are you then? Yep. Where do you go then? What do you do then? You just say, do you oh, keep I'm moving done. forward? You know. Yeah, that's that's where people find out just who they are, mm -hmm. and that's where the that's where that mental toughness of, well, I can't win, but I by God, I'm getting up and doing something about. Yeah, yeah. I had a I had a friend that. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names because you know who it is, but I don't know if he'd want that. But he used to say, uh, you know, if we get in a fight with more than four guys and we don't go to the hospital, we won. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he likes odds like that, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he likes odds like that. He's a... He's... He's sick. I like his sickness, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Last question that's just been bugging me this entire time, ever since you said 400 elk. Was it 400 elk? Yeah. yeah. How far away can you hear 400 elk, like, running? Um, Obviously, uh, it would I don't know. On, it, that would have to be the loudest. Like, when you said herd, I would not Believe it or not, they, they can be incredibly quiet. Really? Um, they can make a crap ton of noise, mm. and then they can be a incredibly Stubby. quiet. They're like ghosts in the woods if they mm. want to be. Yeah. Even those big old racks on their head, like it's unbelievable how they do this number well, right seems here like walking through the woods. Anything. It just like seems so hard to imagine. It's just so hard to imagine. Me, this is random herds of hundreds of animals. Yeah, they usually are separated. They don't usually roll it's like, like it makes that. You realize, it's like cold. How, makes you realize how makes you realize how how limited your thinking is and talking to myself as far as just how big the country is <laughs> you oh, know like oh, when you can have 400 of anything doing any kind of movement like that well, yeah. like where, just how big it is where we were hunting um was right outside of a wilderness area and i'm not sure how many acres that is mm -hmm. but i know it dwarfs where we went for our archery elk hunt it's the largest our, wilderness in the united states right the Absorca region or Absorca wilderness? I'm not sure if it actually is or not, but I know that where we went archery elk hunting um, was just under a million acres. <laughs> and, that, and the Absorca wilderness dwarfs that. That's crazy. Dwarfs that. And it's in the Beartooth Mountains, and we were halfway up there when he tells me, hey, um, keep your head on a swivel because... This is where Montana drops off all their problem grizzlies. <laughs> and I was like, what? Problem grizzlies. <laughs> like, like, like they, 
This isn't just the normal Grizzlies. These are the ones like that are... They're the ones they got for assault and battery. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, they just dropped 25 <laughs> off in July. They just beat their wife. <laughs> yeah. They just got eight of them from the big uh, kingpin in New York. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's <laughs> wolves. There's... Yeah, actually, we, we heard, heard wolves, wolves sounding yeah. off, and they're dangerous. Like, most of the time you ask somebody, like, how, how big do you think a wolf is? They're like 80 pounds, 100 pounds. Yeah. They're 200, yeah. 225 pounds. These things are monsters. Yeah. yeah. They hunt in packs. Mm. Man, I... There was a, a really sobering moment after you had gone back. It was like maybe 20 minutes, and I'm, you know, I'm trucking down, and there was a badger hole. I'm guessing it was a badger hole, and it was covered in snow, and I had stepped in it, and I went forward on my knee, and I was like, oh, I'm done. And, like, it, there was so much pain and everything like that, and I'm just laying there in the snow, my legs in this hole, and all of a sudden I hear, ooh. <laughs> and I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do they know I'm hurt that fast? Yeah. Like, these wolves, they hunt in packs. They're, they're unbelievably smart. Take the smartest dog you've ever heard, mm-hmm. ever even heard of, and they're ten times smarter. We should name a podcast after that. We should name a podcast after, after these sales wolves. Yeah. <clears throat> because any type of wolf is the smartest you'll ever meet. <laughs> anyway. That's Man, awesome. thank you for being on the podcast. Yeah, Tell everybody absolutely. where to find your stuff, where to where to find um, you on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, it's all Archery Outdoorsman. Uh, if you just search Archery Outdoorsman, you can find me. Um, and my website is archeryoutdoorsman.com. And I, I, do, I try and do blog posts every couple weeks or every yep. week or something like that. And Yeah, if you're getting ready for a hunt, too, he's got lists of things to prepare for and what to take and and that kind of stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of incredible information. So I try out tons of different gear. um, So I'm not married to any specific gear. um, So we're sponsored. So it's just like one of those posts that you're like. Every one of these yeah. recommendations is from the same company. Something just hits me right. <laughs> no, he yeah. doesn't. He doesn't have that. So, all right, man. I appreciate yeah, you being absolutely. on here, Tyler. You want to wrap us up, man? Yeah, man. So this is episode ninety-six, the Sales Wolves podcast. Glad to have Aaron with us, and we are the Sales Wolves. Oh.